Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. It is so good to be back doing these again with the Ryan Chats With podcast and, of course, the month of March, Women's History Month, where I get the opportunity to just highlight and spotlight some amazing movers and shakers in the community and all over the nation that are just doing incredible things, creating amazing products, and just making great moves in culture, in business, and all over the place. So it's going to be awesome to dive into this over the course of the next couple of weeks, and it's truly an honor, too, to kick things off with an individual from my hometown, from my actual county here in Washington County, Maryland, who was actually recently on an episode of Shark Tank, the season premiere of this season of Shark Tank, with a new product, Diaper Dust. I have got Regina on here. How are you? Hi, I'm well. How are you? Good, good. It is so good to have you on and to kick off kind of this series here for the month of March with somebody who's done something truly incredible, you know, here, not only in this community, but something that's going to go not only out nationwide, but around the world. Because I know I saw that you've got some customers there out of Canada that are loving the product so far. Tell us a little bit about the story of Diaper Dust and just how you came up with the idea and and really just kind of how you came up with the process of, of putting this together and getting it out there on Shark Tank. Yeah, sure. So many products um, are birthed this way. It came out of need. Um, My son was about 18 months and I mean, his diapers were absolutely disgusting. We had a diaper genie. We had regular trash cans. We were bagging, double bagging. I mean, we bought everything from Target and it just, it would work a little bit, um, but it wasn't what we were looking for. And once um, we would come home and my, the babysitter would have his diapers outside. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is really embarrassing. Like she can't even have these in his nursery. She she must hate us. Like I'm so embarrassed. I'm a full-time worrier. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I was like, okay, something's got to change. So I just started experimenting with different things. And, and it just started um, as a journey for me, for me to find a solution. And... Um, I was actually, I'm a contract nurse and COVID came and um, I think financially the hospitals, um, they couldn't have us anymore. So some of us, so at my particular hospital that I was at, um, they canceled my contract and I went home and I was completely distraught because one, I love being a nurse and two, I loved the people that I worked with there. And I looked at Bobby, my boyfriend, and I said, what am I going to do? Like, do I just go back into nursing, try to like go to those crisis contracts up in New York? And at first I did apply to a couple. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to take this time for me. I'm going to take this time to pursue diaper dust um, and really figure this out because I didn't want somebody else to be in charge of my fate um, financially. (laughs) So I wanted to take it into my own hands. And I said, all right, let's dig, let's dig into this. So I, I experimented even more. I started with, you know, just some baking soda, what I had on hand. And then I took um, activated charcoal because I knew that it's a pretty common deodorizer, but I was like, it's not being used in this way. So let me try. And I tried just activated charcoal and it took the smell away completely but it was so messy. And I was like, this is not user friendly. Like as a mom, I'm, I would hate this. Like I would hate (laughs) just using activated charcoal. So let me figure this out. And I, I mixed the different ratios of baking soda together and a trial and error. I sent some bottles to family and came up with, you know, this particular ratio. Then I got in contact with a patent attorney and this is probably the most important part because this is the most expensive part of anything, <laughs> right? You want to protect what you've created. All the fine but print. I also, yeah. Yeah. I also wanted to make sure that it was, it wasn't already out there and I wasn't infringing on anybody because that's a huge fear of mine amongst mm-hmm. many things. I didn't want to infringe on anybody else's creation. So I said, all right, I would kick myself in two years. If I see somebody on TV have this product. I'm telling you right now, I will pay whatever I need to. (laughs) You need to tell me if this is patentable. And I said, I want it. I want the patent to be for the use, like for the method. Mm -hmm. And he said, Regina, this was like four weeks after he did the search. He goes, it's not out there. (laughs) And I said, all right, let's go. (laughs) Let's go. 
So then it was like just figuring out the best vessel and then getting the label. And I, and not many people know this, Ryan, not many people know <laughs> this, but it wasn't always going to be called diaper dust. Oh, snap. What was the backup was, name? Well, <laughs> Bobby will laugh if I say this. It was actually going to be called Poo Sprinkle. Amazing. Now, <laughs> but it wasn't, I was like, I didn't love it, but I was like, I mean, it's fun. It's because activated charcoal is like, you know, it's dirty. And I was like, yeah. let's make it fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there in bed at night and Bobby said, Reg, I don't like saying the word poo. <laughs> and I said, oh, gosh, I know, I know. Let me think of something else. And I was like, diaper, diaper. I was like, diaper dust. And it just came and he goes, that's it. Mm -hmm. So it, we went from there. We liked like the double D and, and any, and everything like that. So fast forward to, you know, we, we created, I created the website, um, started again on Amazon and, and this is where shark tank comes in. Yeah. Um, I was just laying on the couch and I said, you know what? I have always loved shark tank always. And, you know, this might be too simple of a product. They may not like me, but let me try. So I went on their website. I just applied. Like, I didn't do anything special. I just followed the steps that everybody else, well, not everybody. Yeah. There are different ways to do it. And I applied. I screenshotted the application to Bobby. And he comes down the stairs. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, well this is the best way for people to know about it like mm -hmm. this. And even if I don't get a deal or even if they don't like even see my application, I just kind of want to know what it's like. Mm -hmm. And he said, all right, whatever you want to do, like I support you. Cause I mean, that's the thing is like you, you, you took the idea and you know, you took that chance of just like, Hey, you know what? It's a wild shot in the dark, but it's a shot we're taking. It's a risk we're taking of being like, Hey, Let's see if Shark Tank wants to hear about this kind of idea. And um, I think that either one would have probably been great, diaper dust or poo sprinkle. I think that in particular, just to hear like the sharks have to say poo sprinkle. Um, but I'm kind of glad that diaper dust was the one that ended up being the brand name. Um, but yeah, tell us just about like yeah. that process of, of getting onto Shark Tank, because I know that again, there are a lot of people that submit their ideas, submit their products on there. And, and you see a lot of times, you know, there are some major success stories and there are some people that go on there and, you know, kind of fall flat on their face. Um, but not only was, you know, yours kind of a, a massive success on the first episode, but, you know, you were being used on social media for their promotions of the show. And then even seeing like Kelly Ripa and Ryan Seacrest on their morning show, diving into it and talking about it um, and interviewing Mark Cuban. Like, tell us just about that experience from start to finish, because I, I think it's one of those things that, you know, people see the episodes. And then, of course, here locally, people are seeing, you know, you on social media and being like, holy cow, like, OK, this is really awesome. Um, but they don't see that that kind of like behind the scenes of just like, hey, you know, I submitted the application and I got the call back. And then what was what was the next spot of that? I mean, it's it's definitely a rigorous process. That's really all I can say. And mm. um, and at each step, you know, you're filtered out because they, they start with a large group of people and then they just kind of cut it down and cut it down. And but I can tell you that they are the most helpful people. Mm -hmm. um, they want their show to be a success. They want yeah. you to, they want you to be successful. They want, they want that connection. They want mm -hmm. the deals because that's that one, it's good television. And two, yeah. it makes, it makes a lot of people happy. And, and it makes really like not to be cliche, but like dreams come true. So mm -hmm. they're not, they are, they're, they're helpful. They're, they're kind. They're just, they're a lot, um, they're a lot different than what I expected. You know, you think people mm -hmm. in television, but they, they, they know what they're doing. Yeah. They what was that feeling doing. like whenever you like came into the room and you saw them all seated there, you know, that intimidation factor. I mean, I, I know from experience of like, you know, either judging pageants or even just being on the other side of going in and auditioning for shows and things like that, you know, over the years that that is, it's, it's a rush and it's an intimidating kind of situation. So, you know, what was that like and how did you kind of overcome those initial jitters of walking in the room and getting that probably adrenaline rush of like, Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Mr. Wonderful. Okay. Mark yeah. Cuban's chilling here. Like, ah, <laughs> yeah. 
it gets real. And this is the part that I do love telling people because um, I'm very, I'm very in tune with my body and like, and, and I'll tell you what it, like I had to pat myself on the back because I really held it together. I really thought I was going to like turn all red and like throw up and I didn't do those things. But, um, you know, right before you walk out, I mean, you're standing there and like, you know, that those doors are going to open, you know, your next steps. And I remember just thinking, so Bobby and I were not married and, but I'm like, this is, better than a wedding. Like I'm about <laughs> to walk down the aisle and like see these people and be in front of these awesome people. And so you, you know, you walk out just as you saw on the, on the show. And as soon as I, as soon as I look and I see everybody and I, you know, you, I, I'm definitely somebody that I make eye contact with everybody. I think mm -hmm. that's very important and just smiling. And at that point on that carpet, I felt like I almost, kind of turned into two people at one, at in one. Yeah. I had my facade. I had like this facial expression that I was trying to maintain. But in the back, I felt like I had somebody that was like, oh my gosh, this is happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And like for a, for a split second, a, like when I say split, it was just enough for me to feel worried. But then not a, not long enough to look like there was any hesitation, which I was really thankful for. Mm -hmm. But right in the middle of my pitch, I almost forgot it. <sighs> and I, I almost like let it drop. And I was like, no, 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 come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get back on the tracks. Yeah. Yeah, get back on the tracks. Um, and so, you know, you, I, I kind of turned into like two different people. I tried to maintain like this cool and collected person, but then that like, emotional person was coming through mm -hmm. and when i looked and you know lori lori and emma like they're all holding the bottle and i'm like i just remember thinking back to when i was on the stairs like talking to my patent attorney and i was like they are holding diaper dust in their hands right now no matter what happens after this i got a bottle of diaper dust in lori grenier's hands yeah amazing yeah like there's that starstruck moment of just like you know what like I've made those connections. And I think that's one thing that like a lot of people have started to kind of take away a little bit more so now whenever it comes to like job interviews or even auditions and things like that. That's like, hey, you know what? I may not get the part. I may not get this opportunity, but like I have the opportunity to network or connect with that individual person. And so, you know, you make that presentation, you know, and there were some immediate reactions. I mean, like you had, in, you know, some of the sharks that were just like, yeah, I'm not sure about this. Yeah, I'm good. Like I'm out. Like it was like almost immediate. And, and, you know, how did that feel? Like, how did you kind of overcome that obstacle? Because then, you know, I feel like then in the back of your head, you're probably like, oh crap. Like <laughs> what, what, you know, yeah. what's, what's going to happen here? Yeah. I mean like where, so you, everything is happening pretty fast. And the nice part about it, though, is like there's no music, obviously, you know, like they add yeah, the music yeah. and the effects. You don't hear that. like the so dun, 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 yeah, dun. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of it's just a conversation, you know, mm -hmm. in a group of people and, you know, with the focus on you. So you're trying to answer everybody's questions. Um, so I don't think I don't think I really had enough time to process like I might walk out of here without a deal. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it went through everybody and there was there was a little part of me though that was like mark's still in like even though i'm answering all of these questions mark is still in right right so when he started talking and i turned to him and i just i like turned everything i was like all right you like mm -hmm. you you're my guy yeah <laughs> you're like and and he started talking and he said i want to make you an offer i'm sitting there like i'll take whatever you say yeah. because <laughs> I mean, his, he, it's invaluable. Like mm -hmm. his resources, his, everything, everything he has to offer. Um, you know, I, I did, I looked at somebody's comment um, on social media and she said, you know, 40%, that's a lot. And I was like, I am grateful. Like that's, I feel like he's, he's worth a hundred percent, you know, mm -hmm. um, just to be able to work with him and learn so much. So yeah, yeah. it was that was intense. That was a very intense moment. And I, I mean, I pinched, I was like, this isn't real. Like this isn't happening. 
it was amazing. And I love that emotional moment too, at the end, you know, whenever you guys finally like said, all right, yep, we're in, you know, and that like that big embrace and just that moment of celebration that you guys had, like that showed such a representation of like what that show is all about and the energy and emotion behind it. And like you said, like the making dreams come true thing that, you know, 40%, you saw that, yeah, that's a number, that's a percentage. And, you know, that's a big chunk or a big, you know, a, amount of, you know, of investment and all of that kind of stuff or power over the product or whatever. Um, but you know, like you said, like that means a hundred percent that like, you know, mm -hmm. that's going to go such an incredibly long way. So, you know, obviously, you know, these, these shows are typically produced, you know, uh, further out in advance. Um, and you know, a lot of time that you probably had to like, kind of keep it under, under wraps and yes, not give, that you know, was so hard. <laughs> it, I mean, when you have that and when you know all of this stuff and I, I mean, if I get something for Bobby or Maddox, like it's not, I'm like, Hey, I got you something. Yeah. Like I can't keep a secret. It's I, I'm the worst. <laughs> so this was very difficult. I can imagine. Yeah. And like, I, I would even see like on social media where it was like, Hey, I'm going to be on the show, but I can't tell you anything else. Like yeah. who, who knows what could possibly happen? Like that was, mm -hmm. you know, such, such a cool thing to just kind of see and like follow that journey there online. And, yeah. you know, obviously now, you know, the, the show, uh, you know, has aired. Um, we know the results as far as the episode is concerned. Um, but you know, how have things been, you know, post episode with, whether it's, you know, working with Mark and just how has things been, you know, her, how have things been from a brand perspective too? Yes. So you know, everybody sees the handshake. And, and if you follow Shark Tank, if you, you know, do any sort of research into the show, you know that it's not about the handshake. It's about the due diligence. It's about mm -hmm. them looking at your company. And then, you know, and then it gets real. Like, <laughs> then it gets real. Yeah. And um, I mean, like I said yesterday, like I, I, put, I posted a little video just to answer, you know, because I had some people asking, like, did it close? Did it close? And yes, it closed. It closed about three weeks before, um, you know, just, things just take time and it closed and working working with him. Like, so you work with, um, uh, I don't know what he does with other entrepreneurs, but I have a contact that I am able to, you know, we work together. Um, I don't even want to call her a resource because she's more than that. Mm -hmm. um, but they they talk to you and figure out what your needs are and what your immediate needs are. And my immediate need, like you guys saw on the show, was to get it out of my backyard. Yeah. Was to get it into a co-packer. Get get somebody else, you know, turn in <laughs> that, mix in that stuff. Yeah. So that's what we focused on, and that's what uh, they helped me with. And um, Ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm the one that makes the decisions, but I really do, you know, look, look to look to his team to like, hey, is is this something I should pursue? I'm considering it. And if um, if they can help me, they help me. And if they can't, they we figure it out together. And it's it's been amazing. Like when when you watch, you're like, well, what does that 40 percent mean? What does 30 percent mean? Um, 40% to me mean it, it, he's giving me, I think he's giving me more than 40% to mm -hmm. be honest. Like this is a, he's helping me tremendously. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. And you know, obviously like you've seen the orders start to roll in even more. You've seen that interest. And I did see it is, it's gone basically international, right? For the most part. Well, we can't ship to Canada first. It, it's like $30 <laughs> to ship one bottle and it's just, it's not worth it. Um, two, because it's charcoal, like I can't, like send it the way I need to. So um, it, the only way I think to get there would be through like a retail store to make it worth it. Mm -hmm. um, because I understand that at a $14 price point, first of all, let me preface this with, there is a market for any price point. Mm -hmm. There's a market for it. People will pay $14 for diaper dust. It's not something as a business owner, as a mom, that I would want to like pay for, for, for certain products but there's a market for it. My mm -hmm. goal, my goal as a woman, as a mom, as somebody, you know, somebody that needs to manage a household financially is to get this down, is to get the price point down. Um, it's at a price point to where I can grow and we can get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, but I want this product to be in every childbearing household in America. That's where I want it. So that's the ultimate goal. And if, you know, if that means moving that price point down eventually, then that is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that is, I mean, and it's truly like a, a genius concept. I think of it, you know, as, man, like one of those, what did I think of that kind of moments? Yeah. Um, yeah. And and even better, too, that it's, you know, it's coming from somebody who, you know, has a, a personal connection to the product, too, that, you know, the reason why you created it was, you know, because of that personal connection of like, man, like, you know, these diapers smell terrible. Okay, I need to figure out a solution. And then also, can I share it with the whole world? <laughs> like, yeah. that's that's the beauty of it, I feel like. And that's, you know, that's going to lead to just continuing to inspire others as well. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. I really hope so. I hope that, um, you know, when people think of something and they, they just, you just have to do one step at a time. Mm -hmm. One yeah. step at a time. That's so. huge. And, you know, obviously, like, you know, creating something, this does take a personal connection, like I said, but there's also kind of an entrepreneurial spirit that drives the creation of something like this. Who or, you know, what has inspired you over the years uh, to kind of drive you to, to do something like this? Because, again, you could have just ended it as like, man, my, my kid's diapers smell terrible. I wonder, you know, I wish there was something out there. But you went mm -hmm. in and took that extra mile and said, you know what, I'm actually going to go ahead and experiment with some things and see if I can create something. Thing. And then going as far as to getting with the patent attorney and getting on to Shark Tank and all of that kind of stuff. Like there's that big leap right there that, you know, a lot of people would just stay right here where it's like, all right, hey, I figured out a little concoction. I'm going to text it out to a couple of my friends, but like, I'm just going to just keep it right there. But you were like, you know what? I'm going to like build something out of this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what has inspired you over the years to kind of have that entrepreneurial spirit of like, hey, I'm going to take this, but I'm also going to go the extra mile and make sure that everyone, like you said, every you know mother, every family has an opportunity to have this in their homes. Yeah. So other than every single shark on Shark Tank, um, <laughs> well, I mean, watching them, you know, for 10 plus years, um, but also Joy uh, Mangano, if you, you, if you know who she is, um, if you've ever seen the movie um, Joy. Um, she is an inventor and uh, the second, like the QVC queen, other than Lori, um, she, she inspires me just because she's come up with so many inventions and she, I, um, I was reading her book, Inventing Joy. And in that book, I mean, she's just on the bench looking at a man carry cupcakes and he's like stumbling and like can't carry it. And she's like, there's got to be a better way for this. And then she came up with, you know, a cupcake carrier. Yeah. And that's how my mind works is I am constantly, and it's almost annoying, constantly saying there has got to be a better way. Yeah. We have yeah. the science. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, let's figure it out. So, um, and then let's make it accessible to everybody because mm -hmm. I'm sure there are other people sitting there that, uh, that would love this that I'm creating and it would make their lives easier. Um, you know, and you have, I mean, I rely on, I rely on people like technology, like tech people to make my life easier. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna contribute by making diaper dust, you know? So you, yeah. you, all, you, you this is, this is my contribution. There you go. I mean, that's, that's huge. And obviously too, you know, we see stories that are our major success stories on the show. We see, you know, people that have gone on there, they've, uh, you know, presented their product and it's gone awesome. And you know, what I love too about the program is like over time, I think like three or four seasons in, they started doing the whole thing where it was like, Hey, this is a year or two after that person was on the episode. Let's see how their, you know, their business has been thriving or let's see how their product has been doing and that kind of thing. Um, but obviously you see some where the people will go in there and, you know, you may think as a viewer, like, wow, this is a really great product, but they just don't, you know, bite on it. Like there's not that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how have you overcome adversity in the past so, though that if something were to have happened where say, you know, you, you didn't get with Mark, you didn't connect with Mark, Mark didn't take that opportunity uh, to invest in this product. You know, what would you have done uh, if, if that wouldn't have taken place and how have you used adversity in the past to kind of overcome some of those obstacles? Well, I always try, nothing is ever a hundred percent bad or a hundred percent good, Yeah. but I do try to take, I do try to find the good part of a bad situation and just try to grow that within myself to move forward. And had I not gotten a deal on Shark Tank, I would have taken the experience from it, the process. I mean, this was a very stressful process for me. I was still working. Um, you know, I was, I was canceled, you know, while I figured this out and then they brought us back and I was, so I was still working full time 
still trying to figure this out. So I was very stressed um, and doing something. I was in kind of uncharted waters, if you will, for, for me. And, and I got through it and I did it. So even if I didn't get a deal, I still got so far and I was going to take that. Yeah. And, and grow that and just that have that inspire me to move forward. Now, if the feedback that I got was like, no, like diaper dust didn't work, then like if they didn't feel like it worked for them, that would be a little different. Mm -hmm. That would be something where I would say, you know what? OK, it, it didn't it didn't get rid of the odor for them. Like they still smelled it. Maybe I need to rethink things. So that's also a part that, I, you know, you have to be honest with yourself mm -hmm. and say these, it, it didn't work for them. So maybe I need to, maybe I need to work on things. Yeah. Um, but e either way, you know, you just, you move forward, you don't work, you don't, you don't dwell, you don't sit, you just have to keep going. Yeah. It's kind of like in, instead of, you know, kind of sitting in the like lost kind of mindset of like, ah, oh, man, like, you know bombed that or whatever, like that kind of thing. You know, it's like taking that opportunity and seeing the good, but also like you said, like seeing the learning experience of like, okay, well, how can I improve this so that it can be, you know, a really significant product? And obviously too, like, you know, the beauty of the as seen on Shark Tank kind of concept as well is really yeah. great of, you know, having that takeaway of like, hey, I had the opportunity to get some great guidance from, you know, these four amazing individuals, you know, regardless of the outcome. Um, but obviously we're happy that it went the right way. <laughs> so yeah. that's yeah. that's pretty major. Um, and two, like, you know, the one thing that I think about as well is this kind of thing, because of the fact that this is now on television, this is now out online, um, you know, it's it's available for the next generation of creators, of inventors, of entrepreneurs. And, and I think too of like, you know, your child is now going to grow up and be like, man, I was the inspiration to this pretty awesome product. So like, that's pretty cool that I think about like, man, like if I was growing up to where like, I'm now like, you know, 26 years old and I realized that like, you know, my mom created this cool invention that Mark Cuban thinks is dope. I'm like, that's, yeah. that's awesome. Um, oh my gosh. When he, so when he was on Kelly and Ryan, that was, I felt I, I don't not better than Shark Tank, but like <laughs> the, the way he was talking about the product and because that's what that's what I needed as a business. I needed the education part yeah. for people to know that we existed and know how it works. And mm -hmm. and that's a big chunk of the start of your business. And because I'm so you know, I'm still new um, that helped us a lot. It, it, it answered questions ahead of time on mm -hmm. usage and um and it really, it really helped. And I mean, to hear him say Regina was like, what? I was sitting there drinking my coffee and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> what did he just say? He said my name. <laughs> yeah. Cause that was like a surprise moment, right? You're in that spot where you were like, you, you didn't really, like you knew he was going to be on the show, but you weren't really sure that like that was going to be taking place. Right. Right. Yeah. Anything. So, and I just heard from, from like a friend, it's like, Hey, you know, um, I know you're going on Shark Tank on Friday, but um, you know they're they're going to be talking about Shark Tank tomorrow on Kelly and Ryan. I was like, oh, you know, well, I wonder. I I was just seeing like maybe one of my clips makes it or you yeah. know a picture, and um, and of course any opportunity to 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 see any of the sharks doing anything is is always good. But mm -hmm. I I'm sitting there like just drinking coffee and I was feeling like prepared <laughs> for Friday. Yeah. I was like, all right, I feel prepared. I have my packages. I have everything ready. Like I can sit down and drink my coffee. Yeah. And then he comes on and just blows <laughs> us up. And my phone is just vibrating with orders. And I was like, no, I'm not ready. He took the table and just flipped it upside down in, in the best way possible. <laughs> yes. He was like, I hope you're, I hope you're ready, Reggie. Let's go. <laughs> That's amazing. Like he literally is just kind of like, well, hey, uh, instead of just walking you through the next couple of days, let me just yank you through real quick it and was, get that big was, exposure. Uh, you've seen those TikToks. It's like you're just waiting and waiting and waiting. And here we go. He's just like, yeah, here we go. Come on down. Yeah, that's that's incredible. So it was really just like such a surprise moment. Yeah. Um, no idea. And yeah, but like again, like I, I think of just like that that next generation, those you know younger individuals that you know that not only follow the show, but you know they follow creators, inventors, entrepreneur entrepreneurs that are you know movers and shakers that are just kind of like, hey, I want to create this, I'm going to create it, and then I'm also just going to see you know how 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 I can take it or where I can take it. Um, so what would be you know your best advice now that you are you know headfirst into this journey with diaper dust? Um, you know for somebody who's sitting in that same spot that you were, where they were like, man. 
I wish there was something for this. And they figured something out. They're close to that moment where, you know, like you said, you're out in the backyard, you're putting all this together and you're like, I think I have something, you know, what Mm -hmm. would be your best advice for them that maybe they're all kind of on the fence of like, Hey, you know, should I submit this to a show like Shark Tank? Should I submit this to a patent attorney? Should I take this extra step? You know, what would be, what would be your advice to them? So what, what I would tell, what I would tell people that, um, that want to do this is get organized, find the need in your market, find the best way to make your product and promote yourself. Do not be afraid to brag about your product. Um, I am not a car salesman person. Like I, I don't walk up to people at the park and say, Hey, try this diaper. (laughs) Um, but you definitely need to find a way to sell yourself and your product, find your voice and be confident in it. Um, because nobody's going to be confident in you if you're not confident in yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's huge. Cause I mean, yeah, it's, it's kind of like blocking out that background noise almost in a way of like, you know, the, the people that are lifting you up, embrace them. But the people that are like, well, are you sure about that? Like, are you really, do you really think that that's going to work or, you know, that kind of thing? It's like, you know, making sure that you can, you know, kind of block out that noise in particular, um, you know, and just exactly. keep, like crushing forward to, you know, to what you, you know, have in mind. Exactly. You're exactly right. I think that's huge. And then finally, too, how can people get the product? How can people jump on, learn more about diaper dust, and of course, jump in and purchase, too? I'm going to make make your life even busier right now. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. So we are, right now, we're back ordered. Um, we do have a purchase order in with um, our co-packer. And I'm actually flying out there to the co-packer on the 14th, and I will be shipping out all of the orders um, that are left from the show that are kind of on that order, mm-hmm. I'll be shipping out from our co-packer nice. because I don't want to wait until it gets to me because that's days of, you know, just people waiting and I don't want people to wait. I, I understand, like I am a consumer. Yeah. I, I'm a business owner, but I am also a consumer. So I completely understand. Yeah. Um, so I'll be flying out on the 14th um, to kind of just lay eyes on the process and get those orders out from there. So it's the diaper is our, is our website. And, um, we're also on Amazon. Um, but right now with, with that shipment, we'll just be selling on our website. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's awesome. And then uh, any like social channels or anything online that they can follow you on? Yes. So my Instagram and Facebook, it's pretty much the same content, but it's diaper dust. Um, on Facebook and the diaper dust on Instagram. Uh, I'm also on TikTok, the d- under at the diaper dust lady. Nice. And that's pretty, that's like my fun platform yeah. where, you know, you just kind of see the quirky side of me being a mom or a nurse and a business owner. So mm-hmm. um, it just kind of depends on, you know, what your mood is. If you want, you know, the business marketing and, and announcements, you can follow us on Facebook. But if you wanted to see me in my daily life, <laughs> you can follow me on TikTok. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that too. Cause it's like, you know, uh, you, you ask yourself from a branding perspective, like, you know, what, what can we do as the diaper dust on TikTok? And then, you know, that that's perfect right there. That transparent, like, hey, this is me. This is my family life. And this is, you know, really that behind the scenes, pull the curtain back look of, you know, oh, yeah. of, of your life as a mom and as, you know, an entrepreneur and as the creator of this product. I think that's that's stellar. Yeah, that's definitely what I, what I want to give to people because it's relatable. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to, I, I, I want people to not just, buy from business. I want it to buy from me as a person. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. Well, Regina, thank you so much. And congratulations on everything as well. Like this is just truly spectacular to see just how this product has gone. And just to see, you know, again, somebody from, from my area, that's just like thriving, you know, in, in something like this and, uh, and looking forward to just seeing what the rest of this journey holds. Thank you so much, Ryan. It was a pleasure talking to you and, and talking about this product. I actually feel a little bit lighter just (laughs) <laughs> talking about it to, to somebody because right now I've just been like hunkered down packaging orders and really haven't had a change of scenery. So this has right been on. great. Thank you. Awesome. 
Seriously, can't thank Regina enough for jumping on the podcast and telling her story. Seriously, so cool. Like to know that you take a situation like the COVID-19 pandemic and job loss, combine it with an idea that you have and wanting to improve the smell or odor that's coming from your child's diapers, creating diaper dust, and then making a national brand out of it by just continuing to work insanely hard at it and getting it on a show like Shark Tank, linking up with Mark Cuban, and the rest is history. Such a cool story. Thanks again to Regina for jumping on the podcast. And thanks to you guys for watching. Let's keep this rolling into the month of March. Celebrate some awesome women right here on Ryan Chatswith. I'll see you guys next week. In the meantime, God bless. Peace out, Girl Scouts.